Welcome biologists. In this session, we're going to be looking at specialized cells as listed within your specification point here. So the first one we need to be aware of are red blood cells and red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes. Okay, so these erythrocytes are packed full of hemoglobin and they also have this bioconcave bio structure. So the hemoglobin, they've got so much of this hemoglobin and the reason for this is because they have no nucleus, they have no mitochondrial Golgi or Ruffi R, so they have space to have lots of this hemoglobin. Now don't forget hemoglobin is a quaternary structure protein, you may need to refresh your memory of the structure of hemoglobin. So this is really good for the erythrocyte because it allows the erythrocytes to be packed with hemoglobin, therefore it can carry a large volume of oxygen. The bioconcave structure and shape of the cell also increases the surface area to volume ratio, therefore increasing the efficiency of gas exchange. The next cell is a neutrophil, which is a type of white blood cell. And the nucleus has a certain shape. It has a lobed nucleus. It has a lobed nucleus. So that terminology is directly from the Mark scheme. The cytoplasm appears to have a granular look, and that is due to the enormous number of lysosomes that are present within the neutrophil. Now, if you remember back to cell ultrastructure, lysosomes contain a large number of digestive and hydrolytic enzymes. And the role of them here within the neutrophil is that they will be used to break down and engulfed particles that the neutrophil engulfs. And you'll learn more about the role of white blood cells when you get onto communicable diseases. Next one is squamous epithelial cells, and these have a very flattened, thin, smooth, flat surface. And they are used to line tubes such as blood vessels, like your capillaries, your arteries, veins, and they also line your alveoli in the lungs. Now, this epithelial tissue is held in place by the basement membrane, but the key thing here about squamous epithelial cells is that they, are, they, they increase the rate of diffusion because they have such a short diffusion distance and the short diffusion distance is achieved by this very thin structure of the squamous epithelial cells. Next one are ciliated epithelial cells. So as you can see here, they are column shaped cells which have these hair like structures of cilia on the top. These are found um, on the surface of the trachea and the bronchi. And what they do is the goblet cells secrete mucus, which trap dust particles and also any pathogens that enter into the lungs. And the cilia will waft this mucus to the back of the throat where the mucus will be coughed up or swallowed. Sperm cells. Sperm cells have many, many mitochondria to undergo aerobic respiration to make ATP. And this ATP is needed to um, aid the contractile filaments that in the tail here to contract. So the ATP is needed for these contractile filaments to contract. It also has an acrosome in which we have specialized lysosomes. And again, like we just mentioned there, that lysosomes are needed to break down substances. So in this particular case, the lysosomes actually break down a, a protective layer that's on the outside of my egg cells um, in order to penetrate the eggs to fertilize them. Now, we've also got a streamlined shape to aid their movement. Um, and also, they contain a haploid um, genetics. So, for example, half the genetic information. It's really, really important they contain half the genetic information so that when they fertilize the egg, which is also haploid, they create a diploid zygote. And that is taken directly from the mark schemes. Diploid is a full set of chromosome and zygote is a newly fertilized egg. The next one is a palisade cell. Palisade cells are long and thin and tightly packed. Uh, as you can see here, just within the top layer of this cross section of a leaf. So this is where we find them. And as you can see in this image here, they are packed full of chloroplasts. And the reason why they're packed full of chloroplasts is so that they can absorb the photons of light in the sunlight and undergo photosynthesis. Now you'll learn more about photosynthesis in A2. The next one are the guard cells and stomata. So the guard cells are the cells that line or on the outside of the stomata and cause the stomata, which is a little hole here, to open and close. So the guard cells will open when water moves in via osmosis to cause the turgidity within the cell. So water will move into the vacuole, pushes out or towards the cell wall and causes that turgidity. If water moves out of the guard cells by osmosis, this is when I get a flaccid cells and the stomata will close. The last one is a root hair cell, which has an increased surface area to volume ratio for the uptake of water and minerals.